What's going on today, guys? Welcome back to an episode of WNN. I'm your host, Massive Controller, and tonight we'll be talking about the music production news. In our first story, we'll be talking about this thing. No, that is not the new Ableton Push. Named Pool. Am I dead yet? Basically, it's a control surface that does virtually everything. And I'm not being hyperbolic here, it basically does everything. You can effortlessly route and mix 16 by 16 audio signals, sequence analog signal routings and musical time, sequence 16 tracks with 32 CVs, three MIDI outs and USB, get physical control of your DAW and software instruments, achieve perfect synchronization with your DAW with a dedicated plugin. So it seems like this sort of thing could replace a patch bay. Route, mix, store, and sequence your rack and signal patches on the fly. Yeah, I'm in shock as well too. So this could save a lot of time for people using Euro racks. It also comes with a little patch bay, if that's what you'd call this. I have no idea anymore. You route it through the control surface as seen here. And best of all, it doesn't interrupt the sound when you store or recall a signal chain. So it has 16 polyphonic sequencers, Euclidean mode, polyrhythms, stochastic modes, a voice polyphony per track, high resolution recording, MPE compatibility, real time parameters recording, melody slash pattern generation, LFO and envelope per track, real time MIDI effects, 128 patterns per track. So you can basically draw in modulation with buttons here and best of all it connects to your DAW allowing you to trigger clips from your DAW and you can also record from hardware as well too so no one seems to know when it comes out I'm assuming pretty soon though now obviously you guys are probably thinking damn this thing sounds expensive price is $16.99 someone recently told me I look like I do heroin every other weekend I just want to let you guys know I do heroin every other weekend he's right do you know where I can get some heroin by the way in our next story, have you ever thought about playing your vinyl records vertically? What's that? No? You're calling me an idiot. Okay. So it's a new Kickstarter project that requires you to pay $5.99 for it. And it's out now, it seems like. Their goal was $5,000 and they reached it by quite a quite a lot. Here's some stats here. Bluetooth player, vinyl player, 33 and 45 RPM, table design, adjustable needle pressure, carbon fiber tone arm, triple shock absorbers, a 5E stylus head, vinyl Bluetooth transmission mode. It looks a lot like an old radio. It looks pretty bizarre, if I could be honest. So I guess part of the reason they decided to make this is people often find the look of vinyl Final records pretty appealing so you can actually see it spin in real time without having to stand over like someone looking at their friend after getting beat up from a fight you know what else it looks like it looks like one of those wheels you'd spin to win a prize i'm sure maybe it also could double as that as well too so it's multi-purpose nice so while it is 5.99 on the kickstarter it's going to be 8.99 retail price when it comes out don't mind me, I wasn't being a degenerate looking at my Discord. But I will be a degenerate checking out a new Vocaloid by Porter Robinson. It's just a voice bank, costs $108, and it's based on the voice of Porter Robinson. Okay, so obviously it requires Vocaloid in order to run, as in it's just a voice bank. <laughs> These lyrics though, I'm gonna be honest, Busy Work Speaks would love this shit. So I help you do the things you we got Hyper Pop in a can. Not really much else to say about it. It features 13 singing style presets. Bank also makes use of some of the new features in Vocaloid 6, such as Vocaloid Changer, which uses your own vocal data to replicate your singing style. In our next story, new Spitfire Audio library, of course. They, they just never stop. They got one always in the works, apparently. It's crazy because in the last WNM, I could have sworn UVI also released a percussion library. I think Spitfire has a mole in UVI. So it is titled the Abbey Road Orchestra High Percussion. It's following up their low percussion series, also recorded at Abbey Road. It's $349 until March 27th. After that, it'll be $449. Features 62 percussive instruments, including all these on the screen here. I'm not going to read all that. You can pause and read it if you want to. I'm not trying to bore everyone to death. Sorry guys, gonna have to flashbang you here for a minute. Definitely really cinematic. I feel like it'd be better if they just focused on just the percussion instruments. I don't wanna hear all this other crap in it. It's kind of distracting. I don't know, I'm not as excited about it as the UVI one. It seems like they're different types of percussions from what I can remember about the UVI one. But yeah, this one doesn't intrigue me as much personally. Yo, quick, join my Patreon. I need some more heroin. <laughs> What the fuck are you doing, Fender? Personally, I think this would look a lot cooler if she wasn't also wearing denim. But yeah, Fender is collaborating with Wrangler to make denim, denim shit, make a bunch of denim shit, including a guitar case. I feel like it actually could look epic if she wasn't also wearing denim. The full denim thing is kind of eh. I get the feeling they're kind of throwing shit at the wall and seeing if it sticks, especially since 
the people here are wearing denim. I can't tell if this guy's wearing denim. Maybe, I, I think that is. Denim case is 229. It's funny because this is like a teenage engineering price, but there's actually like a, a decently strange gimmick to it instead of just like a fucking nothing burger. They also have uh, denim guitar straps, which could be kind of cool. Like I said, just don't wear more denim with it. If you're gonna wear this, just don't wear more denim. At least that's my that's my take on this. Unless you just wanna be psycho and have the denim case, the denim strap, the denim jeans, the denim jacket, the denim vest, the denim skin. It's only available in the United States. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I mean, the strap's like 44 pounds. Not, not like weight wise. <sighs> uh, I just don't, I just don't care about this. I just don't care. All right, Behringer. They have a recreation of a Moog Taurus base. I don't know. I just, I personally just don't care. If you're interested in that, uh, it's called Toro. Totally not derivative at all. Two oscillators. I just don't care. I just don't care, man. I just don't care. In our next story, there's a new auto instrumental tool made with AI. Of course, why wouldn't it be at this point? It's made by Cordal and Audio Shake, and it instantly creates instrumentals. The all new tool increases sync likelihood and provides flexibility for music supervisors and content professionals to fit music into scenes. Auto Instrumental was created to empower rights holders to offer music supervisors the first ever on-demand solution for their artist music through instant instrumental creation. Okay, now this is a cool website. This is a cool, I don't know what the fuck I'm looking at, but this is cool. This is cool shit, dude. Cool shit. Oh my God. Wow. You can take some notes from this teenage engineering. Like this is an actual hipster website. That's fucking cool. You should, teenage engineering, you should be embarrassed right now. You should feel ashamed. So essentially from what I understand, Cordal is a company that helps connect creatives with music supervisors. And now they've included this auto instrumental tool that allows you to automatically get an instrumental from a song with vocals. I found this part kind of funny here. Auto instrumental reduces the time of obtaining an instrumental from days or weeks, if it even exists. Yeah because I just couldn't make that instrumental before this. I mean, I understand if you lost a project file or something. That is true though. It is good that you can try out the song in the video or movie or whatever, um, you know, immediately. One problem I foresee with this is what if someone did not actually make the beat that they did vocals on? I just can't stop eating these. It's not what it looks like. I'm doing heroin. In our last story of the night, GPU Audio has announced a free space and time bundle. It includes a reverb, delay, and a convolver. So GPU Audio on the come up, on the come up. Don't really care about the reverb and the delay, but the convolver, that could be interesting. Currently only has 10 impulse responses though. Can you add your own impulse responses though? That is the question. Okay, yeah, you can load your own impulse responses. Let's go. Let's go. So obviously it's a convolution reverb. The, the reverb one also can play impulse responses apparently. It'll be a lot cooler once they're doing stuff that aren't already stock effects. Although the convolver, you know, it's debatable. I actually haven't really tried out any GPU audio plugins yet. What do you guys think of them? I mean, it's free. Can't really complain about free, but I'm gonna try to. This is what you guys look to like to me. The fuck this is what you guys look like to me if you didn't know i'm just a fucking camera you're an inanimate object you disgust me actually i'm very grateful for you thank you for watching okay that's it for the news tonight guys thank you for watching another episode of wnn i'm your host weaver beats make sure to check me out on patreon or become a channel member if you want to support the channel as well as the second channel for everyone who likes this video i'll give you one heroin i'll see you guys next time